Hello, and welcome to another episode of Unworthy History. Here on this channel, we talk about actual history that's unworthy of TV channels like the History Channel that don't show actual history anymore. So in today's episode, I'm going to continue talking about uh, what really started the Mexican Revolution, which of course uh, would lead to the Texas Revolution uh, about 20 years later or so. So I'm going to continue reading from this book. So this is Henderson K. Yoakum's book from 1855, History of Texas, Volume 1. Uh, and so here, uh, in this episode, we're going to read about a fellow by the name of Don Manuel Hildago. So you may have heard that name, but uh, wondered, you know, who is that? What does Hildago mean? Uh, I believe we have a county in Texas uh, named after Hildago. Uh, and so this time, uh, today I'm going to read his story. And it's basically one where he was one of the first revolutionaries uh, to try to free Mexico from Spanish uh, oppressive control. By this time, the torch of revolution had been lighted over the whole of Spanish America. England had at first encouraged and taken part in the revolt of the different provinces. But when the war broke out between France and the Spanish patriots, Great Britain formed an alliance with the latter, while Napoleon, finding he could not secure the colonies for himself, took part in favor of their independence. Before the arrival of the Viceroy Venegas, Don, Ma Don Miguel Hidalgo, a curate of the Dolores in the province of Guanajuato, a great friend of the native Mexicans, and withal a man of good sense and gentle manners, had raised the standard of revolt. The Indians, longing to avenge the atrocities of Cortez and the oppressions of so many years, flew to his aid. He was joined by several companies of the royal troops and marched to the city of Guanajuato, his army increasing daily. He took the place, the place with little opposition, and what was most important to him, he replenished his military chest with five millions of dollars taken from the treasury of the city. The town of Querétaro, in equal in importance to that of Guanajuato, was in favor of the revolution, and to prevent it from falling into the hands of Hidalgo, the viceroy, toward the last of September 1810, sent General Cadena with 3,000 troops to defend it. He also organized several corps of guerrillas, but without effect. The revolt became general, and Hidalgo, after providing himself with munitions and putting in some sort of order of the immense of host of Creoles, Indians, and Mestizos that followed his standards, set out on his march for the capital. The Spanish junta in October of 1809 had decreed terms of conciliation to be submitted to their revolted colonies. These were that the colony should have an equal representation in the national Cortes, and their American and Asiatic colonies should enjoy a free trade, that the king's monopoly should be suppressed, that the working of the quicksilver mines in America should be free, Free. The Native Americans should be equally eligible with European Spaniards to all offices in church or state. That to prevent disputes as to the meaning of this last proposition, there should be an equal number of each of the two classes, and to fill them, there should be a consultative junta in each province to make nominations. These propositions were presented to the Mexican people on the 23rd of September, 1810, but they came too late. Hidalgo was at the head of an enthusiastic army. He had sufficient supplies, had thrown aside the gown and breviary for the sword, and wished a solution to of the questions at issue at some point near the capital. On his march, he overthrew all opposing forces, and it appeared that he would have no difficulty in making himself master of the city. Venegas had only 2,000 troops for its defense. Cadena was supposed to be at Querétaro, and Calea at San Luis Potosi, both too distant to afford relief. At this crisis, Venegas applied the spiritual weapon, which among a superstitious people never fails to have its effect. Hidalgo and his adherents were solemnly excommunicated. The revolted chieftain, who had too much sense to be overawed by such fancies, replied, but not so with his, er his ignorant followers. The prestige of Viceroy had departed. He marched to the suburb of the city, but the next day set out on his retreat. In the meantime, the forces of Cadeta and Caleja, having made forced marches to relieve the capital, united and attacked and defeated Hidalgo, first at Aculco, then at Guanajuato, and again on the 11th of January, 1811, not far from Guadalajara. 
the letter the latter retreated to Zacatejas and then to San Luis Potosi. He was pursued by Caleja and continued his retreat, intending to pass Saltillo and make his way into Louisiana, there to remain until his affairs should be more propitious. But General Salcedo, commandant of the northeastern provinces, had sent out a force to cut him off in that direction, while Arredondo, in command of a Spanish force, was close upon his rear. In this critical position, Hidalgo was betrayed by Don Y. Elisonado, one of his own officers. Acatana de Bajan on the 11th of March, 1811. Many of his followers were executed on the spot. Others were put to death wherever found. Hidalgo was taken to Chihuahua and put to death on the 27th of July, 1811. Among his adherents, Colonel Delgado was apprehended at San Antonio, executed, and his head stuck on a pole at the crossing of the river between the Alamo and the town. Another, Bernardo Guatierrez, affected his escape and took refuge at Nachitoches. The names of some of Hidalgo's followers in the last days of his career are here mentioned because of the important parts played by them in subsequent transactions in Texas. So that was a really uh, interesting but unfortunate story for uh, Don Miguel Hidalgo. Uh, and so you can see that he was uh, really one of the first uh, revolutionaries in Mexico. Uh, and he was successful for a while. He was able to capture a large amount of money uh, in the treasuries of one of the cities he overtook. Uh, but then in the end, the, uh, there were too many royalists at that time supporting Spain. And so they all sent their armies and cut him off. Uh, and he is, and most of his men were eventually executed. So we, we'll hear more about this on uh, future episodes of Unworthy History, and we'll see what happens next uh, on the road to the Mexican Revolution, and then much later on on the road to the Texas Revolution. So if you want to see more uh, episodes like this, then be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Unworthy History.